Hello ladies and gents, I'm the Dapper Rat, and today I'm going to be responding to concerns I've read in the comments. But before we get into that, I just want to say thank you guys so much for the support. I honestly got way more compliments and well thought out critiques than I ever thought I would. Hell, I even got a comment from Slanderous, which was cryptic from my point of view, but I appreciate it nonetheless. And now with that out of the way, we can get to comments that I have something to say about. I had a commenter share his concerns with For Honor becoming more like Overwatch with regards to certain characters being counters to others. This was in response to my suggestion to redefine For Honor's criteria by putting heroes into roles. I don't think this would be a problem as no role inherently counters another, but rather gives a hero situations to show their strength. A teamfighter has tools to aid in a teamfight, a ganker has tools to aid in ganking, and an anti-ganker has tools to aid in anti-ganking. Another commenter gave his insight on how to fix for honor, most of which I agree with. However, his example for new high damaging moves that gives other players a buff is a horrible idea. This move would only be used to confirm kills getting rid of the whole drawback. That being said, this kind of already does exist with Peacekeeper, where attacking a bleeding enemy gives you unblockable attack. Attacks strong enough that their balance is making the enemy you are fighting stronger is a very slippery slope to try and balance and for now should be avoided. He also brings up a proxy revenge system which I don't completely hate but I would need to see tested. Next, a different commenter says that I have three major issues with my initial balancing heroes video. One being that there aren't a good description for heroes due to them having different uses at different skill levels. Two, that limiting characters to roles giving them access to only certain properties would stifle creativity. And three, For Honor is limited on what it can enforce due to it being a fighting game. Now off the top of my head, this comment tells me that I wasn't thorough or specific enough in my original video. To address their first point, every character absolutely can be put into roles that apply at all levels of play with multi-role delineation. They actually do this in their own comments saying that at low levels, Warmonger would be a ganker, but at high level play, she would be more of a flexible character. Now, to be fair, in my original video, I used this graph with clear borders. However, this was more meant to be a skill graph like what you would see in JoJo's stand charts or sports player cards. Also, to add on, since I kind of blazed past this point in my original video, these roles are meant to keep both player and developer honest. Giving a hero meant to exclusively gank an anti-ganking tool is a horrible idea that both player and dev can call out if being ignored. For their second point, there isn't a right answer. On one hand, restrictions would stifle creativity because you are limited on what you can do. Alternatively, limitations can force creativity to come out in new innovative ways and get heroes out of the bash and dodgeable pipeline. That being said, my video was made before the new Viking heroes released and since then I've had more faith in the devs to make good decisions. For their last point, I feel like it's another miscommunication or understanding. Since then, I've also played more Overwatch so I can display my point better using the same examples. The comparison between For Honor and a lot of shooters was due to me playing more hero shooters out of any other role based genre. The main takeaway I was going for in my video was that the roles in For Honor should be similar to that of the playstyle of characters in Overwatch. To expand on that, I don't mean that we have a tank damage and support, but more so a dive brawl poke composition. His third point isn't objectively incorrect, but kind of critiques a point of view that I don't really have, which means there's likely a problem in my delivery. Our fourth comment says that they don't see an issue with counter. That is just one property to counter externals is fine, that it makes people think if externally is the correct option. I wholeheartedly disagree with all these points. First of all, just to clarify, when I'm saying externals, I specifically mean when you are being hit by an attack from an opponent that is not locked onto you. With that being said, counter isn't the only property that counters externals ever since the dodge attack standardization, and it doesn't make people think if externaling is the correct option, it makes almost all options the incorrect option. If you're in an anti-gank with a black prior, then you have essentially been reduced down to a 1v1 where you can only defend. If you guard break black prior, you are interrupted by the enemy. If you external black prior, you get interrupted by his counter. And if you don't external black prior, then he will hit you with an unblockable mix-up. Finally, our last comment has three points. Addressing their first point, they're correct in a few areas. Hitstun essentially nullifies counter's effects and is hardly used from neutral. 
two things which are fully covered in all categories except duels. It still has the benefit of being a base kit option select in very specific scenarios, so it's not completely useless in duels. To be fair though, I'm likely biased against counter, and so I unfairly marked it higher than I should have. Thus, I'm going to knock its dual potential down to a 6 out of 10 from 9 out of 10. However, I still fully believe that the gank potential of counter should be removed. For the second point, they draw attention to how deflect, repost, and superior block are useful due to their fast damage output. This benefit stops others from interrupting your more fundamental punishes like parry to light attack. They also say that you can deflect externals, which is the second time I'm hearing of this. I have never seen it happen, I've never done it, and I've never and I've tested it with my buddy for about an hour. To put that in perspective, it took me about 15 to 30 minutes to force a chain deflect out of bots, and I double checked getting superior block the same day which I completed on my third attempt and could consistently do afterwards. To double clarify, I'm in externals as in an attack not locked onto you. If I can have proof of it happening, then great, I'll change my stance. Also, they say I want a longer chain deflect window, which is just wrong. For their final point, they have a couple interesting ideas. A stamina nerf to dodge recovery cancels, which I'm neutral to full block hit stun reset which intrigues me and lower entry time which i think is an overbuff let dodge bashes chain on miss which also intrigues me but i'm not sure exactly how i feel about it wanting to bring back old out of stamina which to be honest i don't know what they mean by this and to give counter hit stun reset a lower entry time which could restore its rank to what i had pre re-evaluation and break it one last thing I quickly wanted to go over, I had a couple of comments saying that you aren't technically supposed to win an anti-gank, which I think depends on what your win condition is. For me, stalling until a teammate arrives or killing enough enemies until it's a 1v1 signifies the winning of an anti-gank. Obviously, there are some nuances, but with that being said, as always, farewell ladies and gents.